Good morning and welcome back to our devotions as we deeply consider the cross of Jesus and the sufferings of Jesus this week. I want to take us all to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So I basically want to tell about five words this morning. The cross, foolishness, power, silence, and suffering. On April 8, 1966, the Time magazine had a, you know, titled the, the magazine in the front cover as, Is God Dead? See, Gabriel Vahanian and people like Thomas Altizer, they are well known for, for proposing the theory called theothanatology, the death of God theology. They were influenced in a way by people like uh, Friedrich Nietzsche. They emphasize to say that the modern world had come of age. Scientific thoughts had actually made God irrelevant. So they try to say that God is actually no longer alive. I mean, you would have seen the movie called God's Not Dead. I think we, it, it goes in that line. So if we look at the suffering and cross and death of God, people have a death of Christ. People have tried to postulate in a very philosophical way. But what I want to share this morning is a very personal one. And I want to tell you is that the cross, there's a thin line between uh, Petri Pessianism and that means God suffered and God died and the other side is uh, the Gnostic understanding that God would never suffer the cross I mean imagine Paul is talking about the foolishness of this the cross think about the cross it became a symbol of neglect it became a symbol of a very shameful symbol actually in a way because I mean who would only a mad man would take a weapon that has killed your parents or your brother or somebody that you loved and take it as a symbol of a religious symbol. I think that is not something that, uh, you know, you would not take pride in a weapon that has killed somebody that you really love. But we Christians are doing that. That is why Paul calls it, absurd, calls this absurdity as the foolishness of the cross. But if we look at it, the foolishness actually becomes the power because we intimately take that power from God because of our relationship to the suffering of Christ. Now, um, what I want to tell you is that um, let me share a profound thought on the theology of the cross from a German a theologian, Jürgen Moltmann, who has written the book called The Crucified God and also later called The Theology of Hope. Now, he looks, he says that the the crucifixion should be looked at from the point of resurrection. Without crucifixion, there is no resurrection. And without resurrection, there is no crucifixion. So it is vice versa, theology. Now what I want to tell you is that Moltmann tries to understand the meaning of the crucifixion of Christ for us. He, we have, he says, we have a witness to the Easter. You know, God rising from the dead. We have we have we have witness to the east uh, uh, to the good friday but in between when jesus was lying in the tomb nobody witnessed what actually was happening there and he's trying to say and he calls it the silence so what i want to reflect in our own personal life is that sometimes we feel god silent in our lives in our suffering that is what what that is what in the old testament job also felt when he cried out to the silent heavens, no answer. You know, that is the feeling that we have when we come to the suffering. But if you look into our, in the depths of our heart, we can still hear the, the, the silent voice of God telling that, I have been there, I've done that, and I'm with you, hanging on the cross for you. He walked in our shoes through our suffering. And that is the only message that I can tell you. I, cannot tell you about the impassibility of God or patriarchy, some things like that, okay? And 
Did God die on the cross? The question that everybody is asking. Yes, he died on the cross. In the person, in the second person of the Trinity, God died in the person of Jesus Christ. Martin Luther asserted that if only a man had died on the cross and not God himself, we are lost. And again, John Calvin says that he reasoned that only man could truly die and only God could truly, you know, uh, could truly overcome death. That is why Jesus had to be, you know, fully man and fully God. I think these two uh, people have tried to assert that teaching. And here, my friends, Jürgen Moltmann teaches us that the silence in the tomb should be a message for us, a symbol of power that God is with us in our suffering. That is the only message that I wanted to tell you this morning. And so, my friends, in that silence, we know for certain that He has been there and done that for us. God bless me. God bless us all. May we all understand the silence of God in our sufferings. That God is with us. Praise the Lord.